Now, let me give you an analogy or an illustration. It's like kind of watching a cricket player, right? You know, when he is in the pavilion, he is sitting on that bench. You now, he's got his, you know, country's uniform on. He's got his team's uniform on. And he's sitting on that bench. He's padded up. He's got pads on his legs. And he's got, you know, a, a guard on his side. It's all, you know, tied in place. And, it, and he's ready. And he's sitting on that bench. But then when it comes to his turn to bat, what he does is now he picks up his bat, he picks up the helmet, and he takes the gloves and gets into the battlefield because now he's going to wage war against the enemy, the opposite team, and he's going to use his weapons, which is his bat, his helmet, and his gloves. Until then he was having the, the, you know, the uniform on, he had the pads on, and he was sitting with it all the time. But when it came to him to wage war, Meaning, when he had to bat for his team against the opponent, then he put on, he took the bat, he took the helmet and went. That's the same thing in the Christian life. We are committed already. From the day we got saved, we made a decision to follow Christ. That's commitment. No matter what will happen, you know, in the course of my future, I am born again. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. He will be my Lord and Savior forever. I am forever committed to him. I'm committed to the word. I'm committed to the church. I'm committed. I'm totally committed. Not only that, I am called to walk a lifestyle of holiness. I have holiness on. I have his righteousness on all the time. I don't take it only when I need it. No. Righteousness is a lifestyle. You got to live with it 24-7, 365, all the time in simple words. You got to have your shoes on because sometimes the devil will make you, you know, tread on slippery ground. You know, on ground where there are thorns and thistles and all kinds of things that can hurt your feet and hurt your walk. Because if he can debilitate your walk, if he can destroy your walk, then he can cause you to be a victim. And so we got to have the shoes of the gospel of peace. We got to know that we have peace with God. That's the good news. We talked about all of that in detail. You have to have them on all the time. But when the battle comes and there is a barrage of you know fiery darts or arrows sent you know flying across to hit the target hit you then you got to take your shield of faith you got to pull pull your helmet of salvation on and then you got to grab your your sword which is the sword of the spirit and go fight this is the kind of time that we are in where we have to fight the enemy on our knees using the word of the lord using the shield of faith and using the helmet of salvation. Amen. So the first three pieces of armor. We, we clasp them on. We clamp them on. We buckle them up. You know we lock them in place. So that they are unmovable. Just imagine if you have shoes that was you know loose. And it was moving. You're going to hurt yourself. You can't run fast. You can't you know have mobility. You can't have steadfastness. You can't stand your ground. So always they would tie their laces and keep their shoes, you know, intact. They would keep that breastplate tied well. Everything was clamped on, clasped on, locked in place, immovable. But then you have the, the other three coming up. And, you know, one thing I want you to notice in Ephesians, one thing I want you to notice there in, in that verse. Let's go with Ephesians, Ephesians 6. I hope you're still there. I hope you're not moved out from there. Ephesians 6 and in verse 16. This is what it says there. Above all. Now that's quite misleading because when you read the word above all. Now in the modern translations it's been rendered you know, in a better way. But the New King James Version and the Old King James Version says above all. And now when you read that it implies, it looks like. It seems like this is more important than the previous three. The balance three, the, the next three are more important like than the previous three. That's not true. Paul is not saying above all. He's saying in addition to the first three. In addition to all that you've seen until now. He says now take the shield of faith and uh, the sword of the spirit and the helmet of salvation. So it's important. So we got this all buckled on ready. 
And when there is an immediate battle going on, we grab the sword, we take the helmet and put it on, and we take our shield and run into the battle. So you see, it's such a wonderful thing, my brothers and sisters, to think about is why? Because God is in the business of doubly protecting his children. Hallelujah. So you got to wake up in the morning and every day say, I am protected. I'm going to my work, place of work protected. I travel among people protected. I am protected because not only do I have, you know, the first three, the belt of truth. Not only do I have the breastplate of righteousness. Not only is my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But now I'm taking the shield of faith. I'm taking the soul of the spirit and I'm putting on the helmet of salvation. I am doubly protected right through this day. I will come back untouched. I will come back unscathed. I will come back, you know, blessed because I am protected by a God who in who is entrusted in doubly protecting me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, it would have been enough to have, to have had only the first three. That would have been sufficient. Think about it. The belt of truth. Clarity of the word of God. Commitment and readiness. That would have been sufficient to have had the belt of right, uh, the breastplate of righteousness on. Holiness and righteousness. That's the hallmark of the Christian life. I tell you, if there are consequences for sin, I'm telling you there are rewards. There are blessings for righteousness and holy living. The rewards are great. Nothing can overpower you and harm you when you're walking in holiness and righteousness. And when you have confidence in the power of God and when you have confidence that God is on your side, that's sufficient. To know that God is on your side, to know that God is fighting for you, to know that his power is backing you up. I'm telling you, we don't need anything more. But God says, no, I want to give you the shield of faith. Thank God. He has given us a double kind of protection from the enemy. You got to be grateful and say, how great thou art. No wonder the songwriter wrote, how great thou art. I can say at this moment, how great thou art. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, the only reason we are the way we are today is because he keeps us. He has given us double protection. Thank God in a time like this, you can walk in double protection. Mm, hallelujah. You got you to gotta commend hallelujah. You got to praise God in that comment column. Let everybody know you are grateful. Let God know. Put it on that screen and say to God be the glory for I am doubly protected. Everybody type I am doubly protected. Thank God I'm doubly protected. When the battle gets furious, when the battle gets very hot and the arrows are flying all around, I will take the shield of faith. Now, what is the shield of faith for? Verse 16. With which you will be able to quench. The word quench means to put out, to extinguish. Watch this. Not some, not most, but all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My friend, thank God we don't have, you know, just uh, God protecting us from a few or most of the things that comes against us. No, we got God protecting us from all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So you see, the shield of faith is enough. That's how comprehensive it is. That's how complete it is. It gives us a double protection. The Bible says all the fiery darts of the wicked one are quenched, extinguished, put out. The question is, where do they come from? The Bible says they come from the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? Satan. Who else? Satan and all of his demons. You know, they are firing all these fiery darts against the body of Christ, against you and me, and glory to God, we are quenching them by the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Are you using that massive shield that God has given you, my friend? I mean, it gives you total protection. The Roman soldiers, they got behind that shield and it gave them total protection because it was a four into two and a half. A four by two and a half shield. It gave total full protection. My friend, God is saying, I am, I have given you total full protection, but you got to take the shield. You got to stick it on the ground and stand behind it. 
And let the devil shoot all of his fiery darts, all of his fiery arrows. If you got your shield up, not one will hit the target. Not one, not one, my brothers and sisters, not one will hit the target. I wish I had a witness down here. The devil can try all he wants. If you got your shield up, and if you know when to pick up that shield in the heat of the battle, my friend, you're coming out on top. You will come out trumps. Glory to God. This shield of faith quenches the fiery darts of the wicked one. All the fiery darts of the wicked one. Then we need to ask ourselves, what are these fiery darts? What are these fiery darts? What is it that we are trying to stop? What are these fiery darts? It's quite simple, my friend. Very easy to understand. Well, in the battle in those days, the archers, you know, they would get their arrows and what they would do is they would put some flammable, inflammable material that will tie it to the tip of the arrow like cotton or some kind of material that is, you know, uh, inflammable and they would soak it in tar or pitch, all right? They would soak in it, then they would light it up and then the archers would shoot these flaming arrows towards the enemy. And when those, you know, fiery arrows come, they would hit the Roman soul, yeah? Or that particular, you know, place where they targeted. And the, the pitch, the tar, you know, would spread, would splatter. And wherever it spread, like if it's targeted towards a Roman soldier, it would splash all over him. And because tar is flaming, it starts to burn up his clothes and burn up the soldier or burn up that particular area which the enemy has targeted. So that is why they use these flaming missiles, these flaming arrows, so that when it hits its target, it will it would splatter the tar and the flames will spread and burn up the soldier, burn up his clothes or burn up that particular, you know, targeted area. So that's what what the Roman soldiers would do, they would take up this shield of faith that has been covered on the outside, that has been covered on the outside, you know, with this plank, you know, with this, not, not, with, with, not with the plank, the plank covered with this metal piece or this, you know, thick leather that has been soaked so that when these arrows, you know, hit into that leather and sink into the plank, the flames are put out because of the moisture or the water that is soaking in that letter or if it is you know a metal piece it would hit the metal and deflect away so it never touched them it never burned them or burned uh, you know the locality they were in this shield whether it was covered with metal or covered with leather gave them protection from the fiery darts or the fiery arrows now the question is again what are satan's fiery darts. Very simple. Write them down. They are seducing temptations. That's what it is. The fiery darts of the devil are seducing temptations. That's all. So what Paul is referring to here by the Holy Spirit is, he's referring to temptation as the fiery darts of the enemy. What are they? Satan fires these arrows. Number one, impurity. Shafts of impurity. Number two, shafts of selfishness. Thirdly, shafts of, or oh, arrows. If you're writing the word arrows, you can use that as well. Arrows of doubt. Arrows of fear. Arrows of disappointment. Arrows of lust. Arrows of greed. Arrows of covetousness. And so on and so forth. There's much more. All of these are the fiery darts of the devil. These fiery arrows. That's what they are. Impurity, selfishness, doubt, fear, discouragement, lust, greed covetousness and much more in other words you can put all of these fiery darts into three categories it comes down 
to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what it comes down to. That's what it boils down to. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Satan literally bombards every believer with these arrows day in and day out. Believe me. The fiery darts of seductive temptation. All right? It is constantly sent. Why? To elicit out of us ungodly, evil responses. That's what he wants. He targets us with the seductive temptation so that we would give unwanted responses. Unholy, ungodly responses. You see, the problem with a lot of people is they don't realize that Satan is a personal being. There are a lot of people in the world that do not believe in Satan and demons and angels and so on. My brothers and sisters, let me warn you. Satan is a personal being. Because Paul himself says it here in Ephesians 6 and verse 11. Ephesians 6 and verse 11. Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. You see, he's a personal being. He's not an impersonal, you know, being. He's not some kind of, you know, philosophy. Many people think that, you know, when, you, when, when, when young people go to places of, of immorality, you know, they think, you know, they... It's a philosophy. No, immorality is not a philosophy. There are seducing, strong, seducing, wicked, pornographic, immoral spirits behind every wicked act of adultery, fornication, and pornography. It's not a philosophy. It's demons, personal, spiritual beings that are seducing the world into that. Or if you, let's say if you're fighting... You're writing against, you know, gay rights. You're not writing against a philosophy or some impersonal thing. No, you're writing against, you know, you're fighting against demons that are trying to bring in the gay rights. Or let's say you're fighting against, you know, abortions. Once again, it's not a philosophy. When you stand against, you know, People just aborting children. What are you doing? You are saying that I am fighting against the principalities, the powers, the demonic forces that are, you know, seducing people to abort their children so that they can continue to have the fun of sex outside of marriage. And so the devil is not only bombarding the world, he's bombarding the Christians with seductive temptations. So that we would also give evil responses and excuse ourselves. And that is why the Apostle Paul says, you know, the only defense we have against these fiery, you know, temptations, these seductive spirits is the shield of faith. Good God Almighty, God has not left us, you know, defenseless. Thank God, you better celebrate. Your God knows everything. He saw whatever man would ever need after he got saved. And God has provided you the entire armor of God. You got to, you know, stand up on your feet. You got to fall on your face. And whenever you get the time, give God some praise in your quiet time for the armor that you have. Because God is doubly protecting you all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hosanna to the King of kings oh hallelujah 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 we have a tremendous defense mechanism a protective gear called the shield of faith because sometimes let me tell you it rains temptations on us one after another one after another bombarding us to fall bombarding us to take a, a peek at it Sometimes there are magazines before our eyes with all kinds of, you know, immorality in it. And, you know, sometimes we, the, the, the natural part of us says, nothing wrong in just looking at it. That's a seduction. That's a fiery dot. And you got to pick up the shield of faith and say, nothing doing. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. You got to not 
let down your God even a single second. Keep it up and say to God be the glory. I am after Christ. He is my lover. He is my bridegroom. I'm keeping myself chaste. I'm keeping myself as a virgin. I'm waiting for my day of marriage. Hallelujah. It's raining temptations on the believers. As always. But let me tell you. We can overcome. We can overcome.